Mr. Wumble and the Dragon by Enid Blyton. Mr. Wumble was sitting in front of his fire, reading a book of fairy tales, when he read a story about a fierce dragon with fire pouring out of his nose. He turned pale, and his hair stood up on end. When he came to where the prince rescued the princess from the fierce dragon, he cried tears of joy. Then he read how the prince married the princess and lived happily ever after. And he was so pleased that he danced a little jig around the room. Oh, how I wish that I could have an adventure, cried Mr. Wumble, feeling sorry for himself. Mr. Wumble, you forget yourself, said his parrot. He could only say three things, and that was one of them. So that when she was away, the parrot could remind Mr. Wumble to behave himself. Mr. Wumble threw his spectacle case at the parrot, but it missed him and crashed into a vase that broke into more than a hundred pieces. Mr. Wumble, I'm surprised at you, the parrot said. That was the second thing it could say. Mr. Wumble stared at the broken glass in dismay. He didn't dare to think what Mrs. Wumble would say to him when she came home. I'm going out, said Mr. Wumble, making up his mind very quickly. I'm going to have an adventure. Have you got your handkerchief, your hat, your umbrella, your cough lozenges, and your scarf, said the parrot. That was the third thing Mrs. Wumble had taught him to say, because Mr. Wumble had a bad habit of going out without putting on his hat and scarf and coming back with a bad cold. Be quiet, you silly, ridiculous bird, Mr. Wumble said, fiercely putting on his hat. Mr. Wumble, you forget yourself, said the parrot in a very haughty tone. Mr. Wumble found his handkerchief, his hat, his umbrella, and his cough lozenges. Then he tied his scarf around his neck. You can tell Mrs. Wumble that I'm going out to look for an adventure, he said to the parrot. I'm tired of sitting at home being poor good for nothing, Mr. Wumble. I'm going out to rescue princesses and fight fierce dragons. Mr. Wumble, I'm surprised at you, said the parrot. Then Mr. Wumble walked out of the front door. He went out into the fields looking for adventure as hard as he could. He looked in the hedges and in the ditches, but nothing happened at all, except that his umbrella got caught in a hedge and he slipped into a ditch up to his knees. This is not a good day for an adventure, Mr. Wumble said to himself sadly. Just at that very moment, he caught sight of an aeroplane swooping down towards him. It looked exactly as if it was going to land on him. Mr. Wumble turned and ran for his life, but he tripped over a stone and fell flat on his face. Boom, boom, boom. The aeroplane landed just beside Mr. Wumble, and someone jumped out and ran over to him. Have you hurt yourself? asked the aeroplane man. Of course I have, Mr. Wumble said crossly. What do you want to go chasing me like that for? Mr. Wumble stood up and looked haughtily down at the aeroplane man, who was very small, with a very long nose. Mr. Wumble wasn't a big man, and he felt quite pleased to be talking to someone smaller than himself for a change. I wasn't chasing you, the aeroplane man said humbly. I was just going to ask you for some help. Well, I'm rather busy at the moment, said Mr. Wumble, trying to sound important. Busy looking for a princess to rescue or a dragon to fight, actually. How marvelous, said the aeroplane man. I was trying to find my way to fairyland to find a prince. There's a wretched dragon worrying the princess of Silver River, and she sent me to find someone to rescue her. But now you can do it instead. Jumping weasels, said Mr. Wumble, who 
often said strange things when he was surprised. Here was his adventure, all right, but now he had found it. He felt a little afraid. Well, um, um, is it a big dragon? asked Mr. Wumble nervously. Enormous, said the airplane man. Hop in and I'll take you to the princess. She will tell you the whole story. Now, Mr. Wumble didn't mind going to Fairyland, but he certainly wasn't going to fight an enormous dragon. In fact, he thought that Mrs. Wumble would be better at it than he would. Still, he didn't like to seem a coward, so he said nothing more and soon found himself flying high over the town where he lived on his way to meet the princess of Silver River. But at least I'm having an adventure, he said to himself. Just wait until I tell Mrs. Wumble about this. Mr. Wumble, I'm surprised at you, said a voice just by his ear. Mr. Wumble was so astonished that he nearly fell out of the airplane. He turned to see who had spoken, and there was his parrot, sitting on the wing of the airplane, scratching its head with one of its feet. Mr. Wumble looked at the parrot in dismay. Oh, go away, you interfering, interrupting, inconvenient bird, he said. He gave the parrot a push, and it went over the side of the aeroplane. Mr. Wumble leaned over to look where it had went, and forgot to hold on to his hat, which flew away behind him. Drat that niggly, naggly, annoying bird, he said. It's made me lose my hat. Mr. Wumble, you forget yourself, said a voice behind him. Mr. Wumble gave such a jump that the airplane wobbled from side to side. He looked round and saw the parrot was back again. And what's more, it held his hat in its feet. Snorting pigs, cried Mr. Wumble. There's my hat. He took his hat from the parrot and put it on again, just in time for the plane to land. Here we are, said the airplane man. The airplane was going downwards in circles, and when Mr. Wumble looked out, he could see a large, glittering palace just beneath them. Bouncing bunnies, exclaimed Mr. Wumble in great excitement. A real live palace. Mr. Wumble, you forget yourself, said the parrot. But Mr. Wumble did not hear. He was far too busy feeling excited. Just think, he might soon be seeing a princess. The airplane glided down onto the grass in front of the palace and came to a standstill. The little man climbed out and helped Mr. Wumble down. The parrot flew onto his shoulder and wouldn't get off. Mr. Wumble picked up his umbrella and felt about to make sure that he had a clean handkerchief ready. Now I'm ready to see the princess, he said. The little man led him up to some steps and came into a large high room where a beautiful princess lay reading on a couch. She came to meet them and shook hands with Mr. Wumble. He forgot whether he ought to bow or curtsy, so he did both. And who is this? asked the princess, smiling so sweetly that Mr. Wumble couldn't take his eyes off her. This is the person I've brought along to kill the dragon, exclaimed the aeroplane man. He had taken off his baggy clothes now, and Mr. Wumble saw that he was really a little gnome with a very long pointed nose. I see, said the princess, smiling again. She looked so sweet that Mr. Wumble decided he wouldn't tell her just yet that he wasn't going to go near any dragon, big or small. What's your name? asked the princess. Wumble, your highness, Mr. Wumble, said Mr. Wumble. I am very happy to meet you. When would you like to go out and kill the dragon? the princess asked sweetly. Before tea or after tea? Um, after, I think, said Mr. Wumble. Mr. Wumble, I'm surprised at you, the parrot said loudly. Mr. Wumble went very red, for he knew he had told a story, and he was afraid that the princess would find him out. What a darling, quaint bird, said the princess, and she actually stroked the parrot's feathers. 
I can't bear the bird myself, said Mr. Wumble. Mr. Wumble, you forget yourself, said the parrot, putting up the crest of his head very angrily. Oh, the pet, cried the princess. Did you hear what it said? I'm always hearing what it says, answered Mr. Wumble. Here's tea, said the princess. I hope you're hungry. Come and sit down beside me. Mr. Wumble didn't know whether to be glad or sorry that tea had come. He wanted to eat some of the cakes that were in front of him. But he didn't like to think about the dragon he was supposed to go out and kill directly afterwards. The airplane man came over and sat down to share the delicious tea with Mr. Wumble and the princess. There were six different kinds of cream cake, two sorts of jam, and strawberry ice cream to finish up with. Mr. Wumble didn't feel in the least like killing dragons when he had finished. And now what about the dragon, the princess asked the airplane man. Perhaps you take Mr. Wumble to the hill where it lives, Long Nose? Long Nose said he would, and Mr. Wumble began to feel even more uncomfortable. I don't like to trouble you, said Mr. Wumble. I'm sure I could go by myself if, if you told me where to go. Of course, Mr. Wumble was hoping that he might be able to run off and hide somewhere. If only they would let him go off by himself, but they wouldn't. The princess came with him as far as the gate and told him she would take care of the parrot till he came back. And if you don't ever come back, I'll be kind to the parrot, I promise you, she said. Mr. Wumble swallowed hard. Have you got your handkerchief, your hat, your umbrella, your cough lozenges, and your scarf? The parrot said suddenly. Mr. Wumble felt about his handkerchief and his cough lozenges, tied his scarf more tightly round his neck, and checked his umbrella. Come along, come along, said the gnome, and with the princess waving them goodbye, they set off in search of the dragon. We shall soon be there, said the gnome. I do hope you can kill this dragon. It can scorch you to a cinder if you're not careful. So you must look out for his fiery breath. Jumping weasel, said Mr. Wumble, feeling very shaky about the knees. Mr. Wumble, you surprise me, said a voice. And there was the parrot flying just above them. Drat that meddlesome, miserable, muddling bird, cried Mr. Wumble. I can't get rid of it. The parrot settled on his shoulder, and Mr. Wumble had to put up with it. They all went on till they came to a hill. There you are, said the gnome, pointing to a column of smoke that rose in the air halfway up. That's the dragon's breath. Come back to the palace when you've killed it. Long Nose ran down the hill and left Mr. Wumble and the parrot alone. Mr. Wumble turned very pale and thought he would run down the hill too. Then he thought of the princess's smile. And suddenly he made up his mind to go and take a look at the dragon. Perhaps he could kill it somehow, but he'd have to look the other way if he did. Mr. Wumble wasn't much good at killing anything. He hadn't gone very far before he heard a most peculiar noise. It was rather like a horse's call but about twelve times louder. Mr. Wumble stopped and listened. The noise kept on and on and on. Sounds like a very bad cough, thought Mr. Wumble. I wonder who it is. He went on cautiously, peering round every tree to see if it was safe to go on. The noise grew louder and louder. Then he saw smoke rising above the trees. Snorting pig, said Mr. Wumble in a whisper. Mr. Wumble, you forget yourself, said the parrot. Mr. Wumble shook his fist at the parrot and then took a look around the tree he was hiding behind. He saw a most amazing sight. There was a big fire in the middle of a clearing, and crouched over it was a miserable-looking dragon. He was shivering from his head to his tail, and was making the strange noise that Mr. Wumble had heard on his way up the hill. It was a cough, a very bad cough. Mr. Wumble felt quite sorry for him. He looked at the dragon's nose. There was no smoke coming from it. Only the smoldering fire sent a blue column above the trees. Mr. Wumble heaved a sigh of relief. 
The dragon didn't really look so terrible at all. Ugh, ugh, <laughs> coughed the dragon. Mr. Wumble suddenly did a strange thing. He stepped forward, held out his box of cough lozenges, and offered them to the dragon. Please take one, Mr. Wumble said politely. They are very good for coughs. Thank you, said the dragon in a hoarse tone. He put out a clawed foot, neatly took the lozenge from the box and popped it in his mouth. It's very good, said the dragon after a bit. I shall be sorry to eat you after your kindness. Mr. Wumble sat down suddenly. He had been so interested in the dragon's cough that he had quite forgotten about being eaten. He felt very much upset. That's a nice way to repay me for my kindness, he said. I came here to kill you, but instead I gave you a cough lozenge. So you did, said the dragon generously. Well, I won't eat you as long as you give me all the rest of your cough lozenges. Well, I want some for myself, said Mr. Wumble. I get a nasty little cough in the mornings, you know. Give me half then, said the dragon. Go on, or I'll eat you up. You be quiet, said Mr. Wumble, jumping to his feet and lunging at the dragon with his umbrella. The dragon gave a yell and leaped out of the way. Mr. Wumble, I'm surprised at you, said the parrot, which made the dragon look around in astonishment. How does that parrot know my name, he asked. Your name? Whatever do you mean, asked Mr. Wumble in surprise. My name's Wumble, answered the dragon. Wumble the dragon. And I'm sure I heard your parrot say, Mr. Wumble, I'm surprised at you. Well, if that isn't a funny thing, cried Mr. Wumble. My name's Wumble too, Mr. Wumble. You must be cousins or something. I can't possibly kill you now. Nor can I eat you, said the dragon. Let's sit down and have a talk instead. So Mr. Wumble and the dragon sat down by the fire and talked. They told each other all their troubles and got on very well indeed. The dragon told Mr. Wumble that he was very absent-minded and because he was always going out without his hat and scarf, he got dreadful colds. Mr. Wumble said he was just the same. At least your parrot reminds you not to be forgetful, said the dragon. And so does Mrs. Wumble, said Mr. Wumble. Well, what do you want a parrot for as well, the dragon asked in astonishment. I don't, replied Mr. Wumble, shaking his head gloomily. Mrs. Wumble is quite enough. Would you give me your parrot then, asked the dragon eagerly. It would be so nice to have something that called me Mr. Wumble and reminded me of all the things I forget. Mr. Wumble thought for a moment. Then he suddenly had a splendid idea. I'll give you my parrot and half my cough lozenges if you'll do something for me, he said. Oh, anything, anything, said the dragon. Well, look here, said Mr. Wumble. I've always wanted to be brave and splendid. But somehow I've never been able to, and Mrs. Wumble scolds me dreadfully. Now, if she thought that I had really fought and conquered a dragon, don't take offense now. She would be so astonished that she probably wouldn't dare to say another cross word to me ever again. If I could get her here somehow, I expect the princess could manage it, and you'd let me pretend to fight you. Mrs. Wumble would think I was the bravest, strongest man in all the world. No, I don't want to, said the dragon. I don't like the idea of you fighting me. You might get excited and forget and stick a sword in me or something. No, I promise I wouldn't, said Mr. Wumble. Do be a sport, dragon. I'll give you my parrot and all my cough lozenges, if you like. But do say you will. Oh, all right, said the dragon. We'll meet at the bottom of the hill tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. But you must give me your parrot first and the cough lozenges. Here you are, said Mr. Wumble in delight. He handed the box to the dragon and then placed the parrot on the dragon's shoulder. He didn't seem to mind a bit. It seemed to like the dragon much better than it had ever liked Mr. Wumble. It nipped the dragon's ear very gently and spoke to him. Have you got your handkerchief, your hat, your umbrella, your cough lozenges, and your scarf, it said? The dragon smiled with pleasure and said goodbye to Mr. Wumble with glad tears in his eyes. Mr. Wumble walked briskly back to the palace, feeling very pleased with himself. 
When he was taken to the princess, he bowed very low and kissed her hand. Have you killed the dragon? she asked in great excitement. No, but I have arranged that we shall have a fight tomorrow at 10 o'clock, answered Mr. Wumble, banging his umbrella on the ground. I will conquer that fearsome dragon or die in the attempt. Oh, you brave man, said the princess. What do you ask in return for all this? I ask that my wife, Mrs. Wumble, may be fetched here to see the fight, said Mr. Wumble. But don't you want a palace or anything as well? asked the princess in surprise. We usually give a palace or a castle and bags of gold to people who kill dragons. Oh well, I'd like a palace, said Mr. Wumble, and a few bags of gold would come in useful. Very well, said the princess. It shall be done. Mr. Wumble was so excited that he hardly knew what to do. To think that he, ordinary Mr. Wumble, was having an adventure with a princess, a dragon, bags of gold and a palace all mixed up together. At half past nine the next morning, Mr. Wumble watched the airplane go off to fetch Mrs. Wumble. At five minutes to ten, it was back again. Mrs. Wumble climbed out of the airplane and stared round at everybody. Where's Mr. Wumble, she said in a stern voice. He broke one of my best vases yesterday, and I want to ask him how he did it. Oh, you can't ask him now, said the princess. He's getting ready to fight a dragon. See, he's putting on his armor and trying his sword and shield. Mrs. Wumble looked. She could hardly believe her eyes. Mr. Wumble was feeling tremendously excited. The gnome had brought him some shining armor to put on, and he was having a lovely time strutting up and down, waving his sword in the air and shouting fiercely and loudly in a voice that Mrs. Wumble had never heard him use before. Just at that moment, a roaring noise was heard from the hill, and everyone trembled. It was the dragon. Do not fear, shouted Mr. Wumble loudly. Another tremendous roar came from the hillside, and a puff of smoke went up in the air. He is breathing out fire and smoke, cried everybody in terror. I will protect you all, shouted Mr. Wumble even louder. Oh, isn't he brave, said the princess to Mrs. Wumble. Suddenly the dragon leaped into sight, gnashing his teeth so they sounded like crashing rocks. Mr. Wumble felt a bit nervous. The dragon looked very fierce, and Mr. Hum Wumble hoped the dragon wouldn't forget he was only pretending. The dragon roared again and jumped up very high in the air. Mr. Wumble thought the dragon was overdoing things. I ought to have given him the cough lozenges afterwards, not before, he thought. He may think that I would make a nice breakfast first and forget all about my kindness yesterday. Well, if I'm going to be eaten, I might as well give the dragon a few jabs first. Mr. Wumble dashed forward and lunged at the dragon with his sword. He leaped about shouting and lunging all the time, keeping out of the way of the dragon's mouth as well as he could. The dragon dodged about and kept jumping high into the air, which was very annoying. Mr. Wumble jabbed at the dragon once as it came down just beside him and pricked him. Ow! yelled the dragon. Then he turned around and put his mouth close to Mr. Wumble's ear. If you do that again, I'll eat you, he whispered fiercely. I thought we were only pretending to fight. Sorry, said Mr. Wumble, glad that the dragon was pretending after all. Come on, let's dodge around each other again. Off they went again while the watching people cheered and shouted, groaned and clapped as loudly as ever they could. Mr. Wumble danced round and round the dragon, waving his sword merrily and thoroughly enjoying himself. The dragon lashed about and roared fiercely, but neither of them hurt each other at all. Then suddenly the dragon knocked Mr. Wumble flat on the ground with his tail by mistake. If you do that again, I'll jab my sword into your tail hard, Mr. Wumble said, fiercely getting to his feet. Very sorry, said the dragon. Let's finish now, shall we? I feel as if I want to go and take another of those cough lozenges. Come on, then, said Mr. Wumble, and he shouted so loudly that the dragon jumped. They pretended to go for each other more fiercely than ever, and at last the dragon rolled over with a dreadful groan, and they stretched out on the ground. Go, fearful beast, before I kill you, shouted Mr. Wumble, loud enough for everyone to hear. Go back to your home far, far away, and never come to this land again. 
At once the dragon got up and galloped away at a great pace, groaning as it went. It went on and on and on until it could be seen no more. I hope my cough lozenges will really cure his cough, thought Mr. Bumble to himself. He had fancied he heard it coughing as it ran away. Then he heard everybody cheering loudly, and Mrs. Wumble flung her arms round his neck. Oh, my brave, brave Wumble, she cried. I am so proud of you. I won't say a word about that vase you broke. I should think not, said Mr. Wumble in a stern voice. I hope you will never dare to grumble at me for a thing like that, Mrs. Wumble, when I have been busy killing a dragon. He went back to the princess, and she kissed him lightly on both cheeks, and they all went to the palace for a grand feast. Mr. Wumble sat with Mrs. Wumble and the princess at the head of the table, and was very happy. He kept his armor on, because he felt so grand in it. But it was difficult to get his handkerchief out, so he had to take it off after a bit. And now, about your palace, said the princess, when would you like it? Mrs. Wumble's eyes nearly fell out of her head. Oh, any time, said Mr. Wumble in a sort of don't care voice. Oh, Mr. Wumble, do let's have it now, begged Mrs. Wumble. Oh, very well, I'll have it now, said Mr. Wumble, and a few bags of gold, your highness, if it's all the same to you. The princess turned to her butler. See that everything's ready for Mr. Wumble as soon as you can, she said. The butler bowed and went out. After the meal was over, Mr. and Mrs. Wumble were taken to see their palace. It stood on the hill where the dragon had been and was very grand indeed. Mr. Wumble was delighted. He said goodbye to the princess and then taking Mrs. Wumble's hand, he led her into the palace. Oh, you brave, brave man, cried Mrs. Wumble again and kissed him on his nose. Mr. Wumble smiled all over his face. He was the happiest man in the world. There was only one thing he wished he would very much have liked to have, the dragon for a pet. It was such a nice, sensible beast, thought Mr. Wumble, but still it would never have done. I only hope he's happy where he is and has got rid of that nasty cough. As for the parrot, good riddance to bad rubbish, I say. Then Mr. and Mrs. Wumble settled down in their new palace. And you will be glad to know that even though they were not a prince and princess, they lived happily ever after.